Okay. In a way, I've finished, and in a way, I've not finished, of course, Luke. You can never really finish with Bible. I want to start working on, or just bring to your attention, the fact that even though all these meters look really good, what I'm saying they mean isn't necessarily what they mean. I'm, I'm making hypotheses based on the numbers. This is like my first draft. Pretty much all the stuff that I've done on the meter is still a first draft. So it's subject to a lot of vetting and dissension. I know this is a political power, powder keg. A hundred years from now, this is going to be mainstream debate. Um, and I can't be the only one working on it. But I'm the only one I know of, except for other people that have written me, saying that they are starting to work on the meter because of me, and none of them are scholars. They're all just believers who can read the Hebrew and Greek, which is what this was written to do. It wasn't written for the scholars. The scholars are supposed to be better at it, but it was written for Mr. Joe Average, because people memorized the Bible by syllable counts when they heard it, or they read it, or they heard their teacher teach it. He would quote it, and they would memorize it. So, the average Joe believer is me and whoever else is working on this. And there could be scholars working on it, I don't know. But, whether or not you're a scholar, okay, because being a scholar makes it better, hopefully, but scholars are human too, and they can be, pro you know, apostate too. But in any event, don't just take what I'm saying as being, like, true. You don't grow in the spiritual life by just, you know, slobbering over whatever somebody you like says. Okay, that's not going to make you grow. You grow by testing. You grow by being skeptical. Okay? And that was ever since Job, you know, when Elihu says to Job, the ear tastes truth. Okay? So, one of the things that you're going to need to test, and it's really important, is the fact that each one of these timelines that we're doing, and unfortunately I'm still recording in my 64-bit machine, which can't allow me to bring up the other texts. Um, one of the things you need to examine is why. Always the why. You can't account for anything until you account the why. Why is it that Luke's meter here diverges so much from Matthew? The Matthew 24 meter. Okay, that's one of your test questions. How come that's true? Okay. Because in the Matthew 24 meter, it's got a lot more sevenings than this has. This is going 126 years before there's a sevening. But in the Matthew 24 meter, by the time you get to this point, it was the Matthew 4 meter seven at 84 then 42, then 21, then another 21, okay, and then a 70. Well, before you got to the 70, that was 168, but it's not 70 that way in Luke. Why? And then the Matthew 4 meter goes on, Matthew 24 meter goes on, and it doesn't 7 the same way. So, you got two options here, either I'm misreading or misstating the meter, which you can check, you know, just count the syllables and check. Or, Luke's metering something else for the same time period. It's definitely the same time period. Because Luke is definitely surgically, you know, tacking his syllables to um, Matthew 24. But the meter results, the sevening results are not the same. This is a much worse report card than the Matthew 24 meter shows. The Matthew 24 meter, when it's saying 84, it's saying that there was positive volition to God in the Bible. And that was the first two verses. Okay? Which took you 84 years beyond Christ's death. Here is 28 years beyond Christ's death, and that's a good number. It means there's growth with trouble. And then this cumulative is 35 years later. So this is when the old millennium was supposed to start. That's why he's tracking it that way. And that means fine, but vote short. That's why the millennium didn't begin. And that's clear enough. 
The Lord isn't talking about that then. The Lord is just talking about pockets of believers believing and he's showing pretty good results. 84? I mean, this is, this is 93 A.D. You have to add 30. 84 is 114 A.D., which is when the Ketos War starts in Matthew 24. So the Lord is tracking something other than what Luke is tracking. question is, what is it? Now, if you go through the Matthew 24 meter, as I did in the meter videos, it becomes kind of apparent that what the Lord is doing is he's picking up on Daniel's man of time, which is basically the theme of the whole book of Daniel. And Daniel gets progressive revelation about what that man of time means. And the Lord is picking up on that because he keeps on quoting Daniel, referring you to Daniel, to show you how it plays. And he's basically outlining how the king of the north comes to exist in the final days. And my concern is that it looks like he's saying the king of the north is the United States, and that's not good. Now, whether or not that's true, I don't know. I'd have to tack on Matthew 25 to come to that conclusion. But Matthew 24 ends at 1787 A.D., which the only significant event that has to do with Bible and faith is the founding of the United States as the first um, nation that isn't a monarchy, and the first nation that is is expressly, expressly designed to have freedom of religion. There's no state church. Those are two unique things in history. Okay? And yet it's modeled after the Roman Empire, which is where, you know, the whole idea of Revelation 17, harlot, political Christianity. You know, that could happen and be the United States. And the guy, Ted Cruz, who's running for office now for president, that's the kind of sect he belongs to is they're out to make the United States into the Revelation 17 harlot. That's their express purpose. That's how off he is about Bible. Just the reverse of our Constitution, just the reverse of what the Bible warns. So, you know, there's some credence to say that Matthew 24 is pointing to the westward direction of Bible, Bible interest, up and down with the, with the positive volition of believers, and the end is not good. The question is, when is that end? And, you know, we're not done yet because we have to tack on Matthew 25 to figure that out. Now, here in Luke, we don't have these same numbers. So Luke has to be tracking something else. And on top of that, the Luke numbers here don't match Paul's numbers either. Okay. I'm not 100% sure that where I put Paul as an overlay on Matthew 24 is the right place. But no matter how I do the numbers, I don't track the Paul using Luke either. And Paul and Luke were traveling with each other. So they both would have known what God was giving them to write at the same time and they would have talked about it. Alright, so Luke is tracking something other than what Paul's tracking because Paul's numbers are really good too. 56, 21, 7, another 21, then a 28, then a 35, or a 14, I forget which. And then he ends at syllable 147, which is 56 and 91. You don't see that meter in here. 147? 147 AD in Paul. Well, this is already overshooting the field, and this is 130 A.D., and this is 181 A.D., and it doesn't show nothing. So then Luke is tracking something else. What might he be tracking? Well, let's pretend, as our hypothesis, that the, that the Lord is tracking man of time with the Bible interest moving steadily westward and its ups and downs to, to show how the man of time gets completed. All right? That's my hypothesis for Matthew 24, a sort of world trend, not just Rome, not just even the United States, but there are poster boy leaders of the world, you know, at any given time in history, and it ends up being the United States from 1787 onward, okay, primarily because of the Bible interest in it. That's what he's showing, is that Bible interest causes prosperity in a nation, okay, We'll say that um, Paul is showing the impact of believer interest and disinterest in Bible, how it impacted the Roman Empire. 
because Paul basically ends at the beginning of the end of the Western Roman Empire. Okay, but since Luke's timeline goes on 602 years past Paul, down here, he's reconciling the pre-church millennium plus 1050 with the actual 1050 that began at 30 AD, writing from 30 AD, his writing date is actually 28 days, 28 years later, but he's beginning the timeline at 30 A.D. Okay, so that it reconciles both pre-church and post-church uh, millennial time tracks. So if he's doing that, then it, it stands to reason that he's tracing something else. And my guess is, and we're going to test that now. My guess is he's tracing Bible teaching. Bible teaching by those who are the official teachers, Bible teaching by those who are, as it were, rebelling against the official teachers, all right, and then what kind of Bible interest resulted from it, okay, so that his, te his timeline is actually uh, worldwide also, but naturally enough, of course, given the way Bible spread, it's going to have a Western focus at first. And you say, well, but the Bible was believed on in the East, too. Well, yeah, it was, but as I've shown you in previous Luke 21 videos, the Byzantine, you know, which became the Bible of the East, the Byzantine rulers were just really bad. So then, that, then any growth is not being attributed to them, but would be attributed to the West, and the West, this is 450 A.D., okay, and by the time you get here, it's 467, all right, this is just before the Western Roman Empire falls to Ollivacher, okay. Paul had basically stopped at 434, and I showed that, and that's not good. This is another seven years after that, 450 A.D., or, you know, another 16 years after that. So that's not a good report card. So then, if it's true, and that's what we're going to test, if it's true that instead of what the Lord is tracing from the same time period, and instead of what Paul is tracing, what Luke is tracing is Bible teaching, the adequacy or inadequacy of it, largely inadequate going by these numbers, um, then we should be able to know or trace something with specific Bible teachers like right here Jerome Jerome would be born right here okay Jerome was born in 347 this is 346 so the next sentence verse 13 is Jerome's birth right there at the very beginning of the word Apo Besite Besitai now what's kind of cute about that is the verb there is anabino and it means to come down from a ship and what's funny about that is one of the key words for church is pleuroo, and that means to fill up a ship or a woman with cargo. So apobino is like birth, okay? And Jerome's birth is right here. And when you read Jerome's commentaries on the scripture, he's not particularly um, mature. But he did do some really significant things that enable people to get by them. So I'll start to say more about that in the next increment. Okay, we're back. I'm going to cover Jerome again in a minute. But I wanted, now that I've got both of them on screen, I wanted to show you the difference in Matthew 24's meter versus Luke. Because that's what tips me off to the idea that Luke must be um, analyzing something else okay see here this is verse 1 in Matthew 24 first one and two some 84 syllables and I know nominon did this meter I didn't do it but it, it's largely correct I mean the totals are correct and then you know there's some difference with some of the portions but that's an 84 meter you'll notice that there's no 84 meter up at the top of your screen so, 
Luke's got to be analyzing something else because the timelines for both of these are starting at the Lord's death or the last year that he taught would be a, probably a better way to put it. Okay, so, you know, verses 1 and 2 are 84 here down at the bottom. And then we got a 42, 42 syllables for verse 3. Part A, because I told him, I said, you know, you want to you wanna parse these by clause. And he doesn't quite do it, but he, he does break it a little bit. Okay, so he's got a 42 here and a 21 here. And so all of verse 3 equals 63 syllables. And you got a 63 here, okay, in Luke, right up here at his verse 6. Because that's where his metering starts, is at chapter five, uh, verse 5. Okay, but he's not aligning. That's not the same time period, because this is 63 after 84. You see, so it's not the same time period. So whatever the Lord is, is measuring with the sevens, or Matthew is doing, packaging what the Lord said, can't tell for sure, um, is different. Okay? There's some overlap, maybe, but it's not the same thing. And it's not occurring at the same time, because 84 and 63 um, is not 63 years after the Lord's death. It's 84 more than that. All right? So, something's going on here. There's not the same. See, then we got a 21, and then we got a 70. So, that's 84 plus 63, plus 21, plus 70, equals, nine, you know, another 91. So, it, the bigger paragraph would be 84, 63, and 91. Well, that's taking us where? Okay? It's not the same. That's the one thing to, to be sure of. Okay, so, understanding that, I'm trying to figure out, okay, what else would Luke be tracking, and I'm positing now that maybe he's posit maybe he's talking about the teachers, okay? If that's so, then the teachers who are significant should be benchmarked, I would think. Okay, like this is a 63, ending at verse 12, and that's a vote short, and it's a group, it's a group number. Okay, it's a group number, but it still doesn't total a seven. It doesn't seven out. So this group is amidst a large, much larger group that is not teaching properly. Who is this group with the 63? Well, I'd have to go back and try to find out. But instead, I'm going to go back to one that I know was, had a big impact on Bible understanding, and that's Jerome. Okay, and it's kind of cute that his birth occurs right here in 347. See, because remember, this is 346 at the end. Jerome was born in 347. And obviously, the first 12 years of his life, he didn't grow. I mean, you know, that's understandable. Okay? But here, in the next 20, 21 years, which takes us to 379, we got a growth group. Now, what was that about? Well, you can look up Jerome in Wiki. You can look up Jerome anywhere. And Wiki's not always the best source, but it's it's got interesting bibliography and it's often adequate. Okay? So you see he was born three forty seven, he dies four twenty. And so then you get into you know, how much how much do we know about him? And again, you want to vet all this. You don't just accept it. But pretending that it was reasonably accurate, okay? He wasn't baptized until 360 or 366. That's a pretty wide margin. Oh, crud. Oh, nuts. I have to... All right, I have to terminate. I can't do this in the... 64. I'll have to do. I'll have to find another. I'll have to do this on another machine. It just doesn't work well in 64-bit.